Hi guys, in this video we are going to discuss the news that Apple may be using a custom AMD Zen chip in its new 2017 iMacs and MacBook Pros. So this is a good opportunity to recap on what we know about Zen and also what other things may be coming with next gen MacBook Pros. Cracky. So guys, yes there are rumours, and at this point yeah they're only rumours, that Apple may be jumping ship and partnering up with AMD. Until about 10 years ago, Apple didn't used to use any x86 chips at all, they only used to use the PowerPC chip. And then 10 years ago they made the switch to Intel and started using their x86 chips. So, while this isn't anywhere near such a major switch as back then, could it be true that Apple are going to switch vendor and go with AMD? Well, let's have a look at some of the facts. If you've been shut away from the internet for the last year or so, and don't know about Zen, then here's what we know so far. So, Zen is a brand new, from the ground up design by AMD. It's been led from the start by the accomplished CPU architect Jim Keller. Now this is the same person that brought us the original Athlon XP and Athlon 64 processors. You know, the chips we all knew and loved from the early AMD days, and their most successful products to date. As well as being built on a 14 nanometer process FinFET, we're also going to have the new AM4 platform, which is at last supporting things like USB 3.1, M2 SATA, MVME and DDR4 support. This new platform will support both the AMD CPUs and APUs. Um, the CPUs will be the Zen Summit Ridge range and to start with the APUs will be the Bristol Ridge which is not based on Zen but it's based on the Exavator architecture and then later we'll have the Raven Ridge which will be on the Zen architecture. So that's basically some of the physical characteristics of the AMD Zen chips. So what evidence do we have that Apple would actually consider using these new chips? Well, one of the biggest reasons Apple may consider to change to AMD is due to the semi-custom designs that AMD allows their customers to make. They can choose their own style of APU SoC, allowing creative blends like the chips you might find in the Xbox One or the PS4. And people speculate that Intel's move towards better integrated GPUs is partly due to the pressure from Apple on this regard. AMD, however, would allow them a lot more flexibility than Intel do. It would allow Apple, for instance, to order a custom APU paired with HBM in a unique configuration that's only available to Apple. And several leaks have actually revealed that AMD is working on several Zen APUs with large discrete class built-in GPUs and high bandwidth memory. So, MacBook Pro 15 anyone? What do you think? Because if you think about it, this would tie into the fact that Apple always slant their 15 inch MacBook Pros to higher end graphics than their other laptops. So it could emerge as a viable alternative for Apple in case Intel is unable to meet the graphics requirements of these high performance 15 inch MacBook Pros. Another reason which all companies take into consideration is cost. And AMD's plan with Zen is to price high-core CPUs very competitively. Undercutting Intel's mainstream CPUs such as the i5 and i7 and offering them at a price point giving essentially the same type of performance as Haswell and Broadwell eCPUs but keeping them in the price range of $150 to $400. In this price range at the moment from Intel you'd only find like quad-core i7s, i5s or dual core i3 CPUs. So if Intel are charging around what a thousand dollars for their high core count CPUs how can AMD do this for this price? Well apparently this is possible because the Zen core itself is very very power efficient and so AMD can build high core count chips that are still really small in size with good yields and at reasonable costs. So Apple can use these chips and have decent performance and save a fair amount of money. Another reason is, because AMD are the underdogs in the chip world, they have a worse bargaining power with Apple than the leader, say Intel. So 
So what it basically means is Apple can get a better bargaining position and get the chips probably at an even lower price. And so this saving could possibly be passed on to the consumer. But well, knowing Apple, probably not. The only place that will see this extra profit is gonna probably only be Apple's bank account. Well, maybe that's only half true, but it could also allow them to offset the cost of new innovations such as the upcoming OLED touch bar and keep the actual base prices of the laptops from rising. The thing is though, whatever happens, we're going to see a CPU price war take place later like we haven't seen for around 10 years. So it's going to be pretty good for all of us, I think. Anyway, all of this is well and good so long as the actual performance is what we think it's going to be. So, you know, what do we know about Zen's performance? What's it like on paper? What's it like in real life? Because if this doesn't stack up, then Apple wouldn't even consider it. So the fact that they supposedly are, I guess this could be confirmation that these figures may be correct. Well, what are the figures? Zen offers a 40% IPC increase of the architectural performance per clock cycle over AMD's last CPU architecture, which is Excavator. So a 40% increase over their last generation CPUs is pretty good, but it doesn't give us any real life kind of data, you know, it's just a figure. So what real life data do we actually have? Well compared to the 8 core FX 8350, the Zen Base Summit Ridge 8 core chip delivers double the performance in Cinebench R15. Well that's according to AMD. So this means that a single Zen core is basically as efficient as two pile driver cores in performance, which really is pretty impressive. This dramatic performance difference comes from the slightly different architectural performance per clock improvements in addition to Zen's simultaneous multi-threading capability. We also have gaming benchmarks that have been released, well, supposedly leaked. We have the um, Ashes of the Singularity benchmarks. And clocked at 2.8 gigs, the new Zen performed better than the 4 gigahertz clocked FX 8350. So if you took clock speed into account and had a 4 GHz clock Zen, it would perform better than the 8350 by about 98%. And this would put the chip squarely in the territory of Intel's 6900K and 5960X CPUs. So a move to using AMD CPUs and APUs, it makes sense as long as the performance and efficiency are there. Plus the fact that Apple has already started a shift towards more AMD chips recently anyway. Despite using Nvidia for a long time, Apple has moved to include AMD's Radeon 7970, R9285 and M370X in their systems. I don't think we're going to see these changes um, this year, especially if um, the new MacBook Pro is released this year in October. Um, I think that it is probably going to be released in October. While Apple have not confirmed this, they haven't denied it either, but it's a common time when Apple do release its MacBook Pros, um, they often do in October. Um, the iPhone 7 has been released now, so it seems likely that we may see a new MacBook Pro in October of 2016. Looking at Apple's history, we can see the MacBook Pros released starting from 2006, 2008, 2011, and the last time Apple released its MacBook Pro, which was October the 23rd, 2013. So far too soon for the AMD Zen processors. We probably won't even get the Cabby Lake processors in these MacBook Pros either. Um, it's been highly cited that the upcoming MacBook Pro will still have Skylake processors. So what other exciting features then can we expect in the upcoming MacBook Pro? Well, I think the most interesting feature is going to be the OLED display touch bar that's going to replace the function keys. Now hopefully it'll do a lot more than just replace the function keys. I'm really hoping it will replace the finder bar at the top of the Apple Mac so we can see things like our Wi-Fi strength, um, the clock, all that kind of thing. I think that would be pretty cool. Um, other things we're going to have is um, Touch ID, Thunderbolt 3, USB-C and another exciting feature is it's also going to have with it Apple Pencil. Um, another feature that I'm really not happy about, I don't know what you guys think, is they may be dropping the headphone jack. Well, because they've dropped the headphone jack in the iPhone 7, 
we can probably expect Apple to now drop the headphone jack in all of their products across the board. So I think it's very unlikely that we're going to see it in the MacBook Pro. Bit of a shame I think, but you know, we'll have to just wait and see what happens when it's released. Anyway guys, that's the end of the video now. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, if you did enjoy it, I'd really appreciate you guys um, giving me a like on this one. Um, and if you want to see more videos from me, then you know, please subscribe to the channel. Um, whatever you guys are up to for the rest of the day, I really hope you have a good day and um, see you in the next video.